Hi everybody, it's Kelly Russell, the Rock Your Joy Coach. Thank you so much for being with me today and welcome to my channel. So my topic for this week is forgiving the unforgivable. In light of the recent mass shooting of um, many children and teachers in a school in Texas this week, this is what I've been guided to talk about. Um, my heart goes out to everyone that was involved in any way there, as it does to anyone that's involved in any violent act and taking of lives and senseless killing and in, in any way. And, but I, the point that I have been really guided to talk about this in this particular week is that there's a huge temptation for us to focus our anger, our, our vengeful thoughts, our vilification, our hatred onto the perpetrator, onto what, who we perceive to be the attacker and hold that person apart from love and apart from forgiveness and believe that they deserve neither and yet what we're taught by a course in miracles first and foremost although it is very difficult to remember this when the world of form that we believe is our reality it's the reality with a small r not a capital r but we believe that this is our home and we you know, this is, this is where we experience life. When something tragic and terrible happens, we immediately project all of our fear and all of our unconscious guilt that we carry around, believing that we're separate from God, we project it onto the perpetrator or attacker. And they are they are then the receptacle of all of our own unexpressed and unhealed guilt and fear and shame and vengeance and hatred. And if we think we're not carrying that, we're mistaken and we're in denial. We are carrying that. And when when someone does an act like this, we want to blame them. We want to punish them. We want to, we want to focus on how they victimized. And yet what we're not willing to do often is to look at our own attack thoughts that we harbor, that we have those same thoughts of whatever Whatever caused the level of insanity in that kid to walk into a school and gun down all of those people, that it was insane, first of all. That was insanity. And that we have the same level of insanity. The level of insanity that causes us to believe that this world of illusion is could be ever be created by God that anything like this could ever be created by God. The truth is what is created by God is us. And we are all one. We are all brothers, including the shooter, including all of the perpetrators in the world. And so when I talk about the unforgivable, we, we are looking at these acts as if they are done by people and people like our brothers. And that's the first mistake. These acts are a projection of the ego mind, the ego mind that is filled with fear and hatred and vengeance. And it takes many different forms. And this is the form that it is most recently taken. But where the problem starts is with the attack thoughts that are in the mind. And the attack thoughts in the mind are coming from a place of suppressed guilt and fear, which turns into rage and vengeance and hatred. 
about ourselves. And then it becomes so intolerable that it gets projected out onto our brothers, onto the world and into, into tragic events like this. But, you know, I'm a fan of gun control. I don't see a reason to have assault weapons ever for any reason. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the activism and everything that we can do on the level of the world that we are guided by the Holy Spirit to do is fine, but that's not where the problem lies. The problem lies in our minds and in all of our attack thoughts. We are a collective mind, which means every thought that we think is contributed to the larger, the whole holistic thought reality. And so we can't think a private thought and keep it in our bubble. We can't think a thought that doesn't then join with all the other thoughts of all of our brothers and, and create a power of thought. And so we have to really think about what are we contributing to that? What are we, are we polluting it with thoughts of fear and attack and condemnation and judgment and criticism or are we are we causing it those things to dissolve are we clearing it are we are we dissolving that pollution with our thoughts of love and the closest thing that we can really get to a true thought of love in this world is true forgiveness it is literally being able to see our brother see the light, see the truth, see the God, see the love in our brother. And it's only then that we can see it in ourselves. So that is the only way that we will be able to see ourselves as innocent and undo that ego mind that is responsible for causing these projections of hatred that get acted out in the world in the first place. And so for us to be able to practice forgiveness around every single thing that we see, every single thing that disturbs our peace, everything that appears to happen in this illusory world. And to remember that this world is an illusion, that that is the central teaching of A Course in Miracles, is that this, there is no world. So as real as this all feels, and I know that it does, especially at these terrible times when it feels so painful, and I am not asking people not to feel their feelings. I'm not suggesting that we do a spiritual bypass and overlook and pretend that we don't feel how we feel. But I am asking us to, as we feel our feelings, to also remember what the truth is. And the truth is that the kid who shot those kids is a brother in the same way that those children are our brothers, those teachers are our brothers, the parents are our brothers and their loved ones. Every Everyone is our brother. There's no one who is not a brother. There is no one who is not created whole and perfect by God. And that what we think of as unforgivable are actions, the, the acting out of, of that ego, guilt and rage and hatred in the world that we all harbor. And so I'm asking all of us to really consider with our own thoughts, what are we putting out into the world and to be mindful and to be conscious when you have an attack thought to do everything you can do to immediately, as soon as you can dissolve it into the light with the practice of true forgiveness so that it does not continue to compound the one mind with that kind of that kind of pollution and that kind of darkness which will then be acted out in all the different ways that it gets acted out onto this world there are numerous ways and you know mass shootings are one of one of them and they're they're terrible and they're tragic and there's there are wars and there is homicide and there are there are abuses and terrorism and all kinds of ways that these these this darkness gets acted out but it also gets acted out right at home 
in our where it starts in our own minds and we act it out in our own lives in our own relationships and although this looks like it's on a, a much larger scale and it looks like it's different just as a course in miracles teaches that there is no order of difficulty in miracles which means there is nothing that is harder to forgive than something else there's nothing larger or smaller it feels like there is in this world because this is a world of separation and it is a world of things being in different sizes and in different intensities and all of that is all part of that of that separation and that belief in separation but the truth is that extending love is extending love is extending love and that the love has no degrees there is no separation in love. There are no boundaries in love. There is no one that is undeserving of our love. And there is no one and nothing that we can't forgive. Because if you remember, we're not forgiving what happened. That's the whole point of true forgiveness and why it makes it, why, what is, makes it different from every other kind of forgiveness in the world is that it doesn't make things real and then pardon them. The whole idea of pardoning is that you're forgiving what happened in an illusory dream. And I again, I know that that's very difficult to remember when something really terrible happens in the dream, but a nightmare is still a nightmare. It isn't real. And so for us to be able to remember that as real as this seems, what is true and what is real is that we have never left heaven. We never separated. We are still one and joined with everyone that we ever believe and perceive that we have ever lost, including all of those children and those teachers in Texas, including the kid who shot them, including everyone that's been a victim of a war or a killing, a homicide, uh, died in any other way and everyone that we ever perceive that we've ever lost the truth is we've never left heaven we we we've never been in the darkness of this world it's just that this is what our dream is and at times like this as i said this this dream feels like a nightmare but for for those of us for who this is our thought system this is the time to remember that and so forgiving the unforgivable is remembering that there is nothing to forgive and what we're really forgiving is our own belief in the illusion and that there is no time when we believe in this illusion more than when something difficult and and tragic and challenging and terrible happens in this world it's when that's when the ego mind really challenges us to to choose whether we're going to believe in the thought system of the ego and the fear and that this world is real or whether we're going to choose with spirit and with love and remember who we are and choose the light. And so that's my message for you today is I know it's hard. I'm not suggesting that it isn't, but I also know that faith is the strongest power that we have love is the strongest force in the universe but our faith and our belief in our power of love and to choose love over fear that's the most powerful thing that we could possibly do and i think that's what we're being called to do right now so i encourage you to do that and i send my love and light to you I love you so much and thank you so much for joining with me. Thank you for being on my channel. If you haven't subscribed I and, and you haven't um, and you'd like to click the button below, I'm here every week talking about the practical application of a thought, the, the thought system of A Course in Miracles. And you can also check out the link tree below um, for some other additional gifts that I have for you for just expanding your repertoire of tools to be able to cope with when fear shows up in the world 
or in your life. I love you.